It's a great day because of the significance of the achievements of these students over a demanding 27-month journey here at the Army War College. They have earned this day. My sincere thanks go to the class of 2016 for your great attitude and effort over the past two years. My thanks go as well to the faculty and staff of the U.S. Army War College for your professionalism and skills as teachers and mentors. I've got the distinct pleasure of introducing our graduation speaker, a soldier for over, who for over 32 years has exemplified the skills and attributes to which we all aspire as warriors and strategic leaders. A lifelong cavalryman, Lieutenant General Tim Cadavy has commanded in the Balkans, has served in combat in both Baghdad and Kabul, and has served as the Adjutant General of Nebraska. In March 2015, he took over as the Director of the Army National Guard. Since becoming director last year, General Cadavy has energized the team to look at the future and what it means, not just for the Guard, but for the total Army. He's fought tirelessly to provide the Army with the ready capability and capacity needed to defend America, preserve national freedom of action, and provide strategic options for the President. Lieutenant General Tim Cadavy. Thank you. Well, good morning, team, and welcome to our distinguished military, civilian, and foreign visitors. We're so happy that all of you could be here uh, with us today to celebrate uh, the graduation of this class. And I'm thrilled to be here today and able to participate in this graduation ceremony. Additionally, it's great to see out in the crowd, so many familiar faces within this class who I have served with over my many years of service. So good to see all of you. I offer my congratulations to each and every one of you today for achieving this very important and unique military career milestones. For those of you that don't know me, as uh, General Rapp said, it is my distinct privilege to serve as the Director of the Army National Guard and be part of our Army team. It's great to see so many of our adjutant generals from the 54 states, territories, and District of Columbia here today, and U.S. Army Reserve senior leaders who are also here today, along with our counterparts from our active component, our active U.S. Army. It's, again, one more very strong reminder that we are indeed one Army. And I know that we have a number of civilian leaders here also today, so I truly thank all of you for coming here today and supporting this tremendous group of graduates. And again, I sincerely appreciate this opportunity to be here to pay tribute to all of you graduates on this very special day. <clears throat> so I think you're probably aware, <clears throat> class, that this is absolutely the toughest way to get an Army War College diploma. And, and, and all I can say to you and to your families is well done, well done, and thanks for the effort and the time uh, that you put in. And we all know that we can't do what we do without the support of our families. So you've been thoroughly tested and found completely worthy of the moniker Graduate United States Army War College. And indeed, we are all very proud of each and every one of you. I tend not to want to single anybody out, but I would like to offer special recognition to your class president, Colonel Cynthia Tinkham of the Oklahoma Army National Guard. Serving as the class president, it's quite an honor. Uh, and undoubtedly, I think it gave you a few extra responsibilities and duties, uh, probably something you weren't anticipating as you started day one as a student at the Army War College. To all the graduates of class 2016, your ambition to complete the grueling demands of the Army War College shows that you are not only willing to take on more challenges, but that those of us in senior strategic positions can count on you to help us meet the challenges that we face on a daily basis within our military. We are counting on each and every one of you to help us shape the immediate and long-term future of our United States Army. 27 months ago, 
the Commandant welcomed you to the Army War College, and he challenged you to break out that toolbox that you have used throughout your career that has made you so successful and got you to this point. And he, and he challenged you again to be ready to add new tools to that toolbox and also to hone your abilities of how you would use those tools that are already in that box. So now you have this set of new and old tools and I think you'll find that they will be critical and key in carrying you forward from this point on as senior leaders in our Army. The rigors of the academic program and readings, the discussions and debates in your seminars during the summer sessions and the many hours spent in front of computers with pencil and paper are now all behind you and you are ready to move out. You have acquired new tools for that now much bigger toolbox of yours. Whether or not you realize it, you have made a transformation from a proven, highly successful tactical leader to someone who can step up and step in and provide sound advice to our most senior strategic leaders, both civilian and military. The assignments you get from here on out will likely demand that you think on a higher plane, think at the strategic level, and to be ready for those ambiguous and wicked, wicked complex problems that tend to reside in the circles in which you will walk. I hope the conversations you had in the seminars this past week with civilian leaders who joined you made you stop and think a little bit and maybe have one of those eureka moments uh, where you realize that you've really transformed the way you think and communicate ideas. You are now at that point in your career where all the easy problems have been taken care of, care of by your subordinate leaders. What comes to you from here on in will be the tough problems those that are constantly changing and probably very well ill-defined. Ill those upon which starting to take action will change right before your very eyes. And as we all mean, that doesn't mean we just throw our hands up in the air in dismay and uh, you know, whine a little bit about how, how hard they are. But rather, we all know that's the time we roll up our sleeves, get back to work, and accept the end inevitability of the complexity and the constant change, and get busy moving your organizations towards successful outcomes. I'm confident that you have the tools and skills to deal with that kind of world. We're gonna be asked very soon, and you are gonna be asked very soon, to jump right into the complex environment when you head back to your next posting. For a number of you, those assignments will be back in harm's ways, for others, it will be on high-level staffs or in commands of your own. I have no doubt that you will be a valuable, a valuable, key, and critical member of whatever team you serve on. And as you move into those organizations that await you, some subordinates might see you as just the next officer in a string of officers that come and go. But I ask you to consider this You may have to use those skills, and I ask that you have the courage to affect change where change is needed. I think you will find, as I did, that your leadership style will have to grow and evolve as you assume additional and more senior responsibilities. What you've done in leadership to this point of your career may only be the foundation upon which your next assignments will work as you go forward from this point on. Will have, you will have to use those leadership skills that you honed here, that you practiced here. And I know that you will be ready because our nation needs you to be ready. As long as I've been wearing the uniform, the, Ar the Army has always been an all-volunteer force. Throughout that time, our country has faced a variety of challenges, and the Army has evolved to meet and overcome all of those challenges along with our other fellow service members and services. But today our world is certainly different and in so many ways much more challenging. Our all, volunt all, all volunteer force may be more important than ever before. Do not underestimate your crucial role in making sure the all volunteer army maintains and improves its readiness levels that are necessary 
to address the threats our, nations face, our nation faces today and into the future. That's partly why you are here. Leadership development is one of the reasons you all came to the Army <coughs> War College. Yes, you are developing yourselves as our next senior leaders, but you're also obligated to develop leaders within your own organizations. We in the Army train our successors, and that is part of your mission as Army War College graduates. Our Army must continue to recruit, train, maintain and develop leaders of character. They're able to adapt and overcome an ever more changing world. Combat experience alone will not ensure success. Leaders of character will. Leaders of character will foster a climate of trust. Trust is the bedrock of our profession. Trust in the codified and codified in our doctrine as first among all essential characteristics of the Army profession and for good reason. Internal trust binds soldiers together to meet the demands of combat. Trust respects and trust protects. External trust with the American public is requisite to maintaining the Army as a unique and autonomous profession of arms. Maintaining that trust is a shared responsibility among the institutional Army the operational force, and each and every individual soldier in our United States Army. The very nature of the all-volunteer force depends on it. The all-volunteer force is our greatest strategic asset. It constitutes the finest fighting force the world has ever known. But to quote our Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Ashton Carter, quote, that excellence is not a birthright. It's not guaranteed, and we can't take it for granted in the 21st century. We live in a changing, changing and competitive world, and we have to earn that excellence again and again." Unquote. I've had the great fortune of learning about leadership from some very amazing people in and out of uniform over my past 32 years of service as a commissioned officer. If I may be so bold as to offer a few tips from, it says old guy here, but I'm gonna use more senior guy. First, never stop learning, reading or exploring new ideas. Creativity and innovation depend on this commitment to lifelong learning. That's why you're here. The late moral and social philosopher, Eric Hoffer, authored 10 books and was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1983. Mr. Hoffer tells us that in a world of change, learners will in inherit the earth, while the learned will find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with the world that no longer exists. Two, think about the interconnectedness of objectives, ways, and means, and be able to clearly articulate risks in all its forms if that equation is out of balance. As we have had a number of speakers tell us this year, the President, the Secretary of Defense, the Chairman, the Chief of Staff of the Army, uh, that our civilian leadership, they decide on the objectives and they make the national strategic decisions. Yours and your bosses provide best military advice and must be able to clearly articulate levels of risk in the options being considered. That includes risk of inaction, risk to force, and risk to mission. I charge you to be strategic thinkers and to help your senior leaders provide the best military advice when asked and when needed. Third, have the humility to know that you don't always know the right answer or that your assumptions, those things that you take as true, may not be right. Noted British economist John Menard Keyes famously said, I change my opinion when the information changes. What do you do? Fourth, take care of yourself, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Leading at the senior level comes at a time in our lives when the problems are really hard, the stakes are very high, the stress can be oppressive, and the consequence of decisions are quite heavy you will bear 
great burdens and your decisions may well affect lives. Be sure that you have kept yourself ready to be physically and mentally present and sharp when called upon. And finally, I'd just like to wish the best for all of you as you move on to your new assignments. You are all now part of the Army War College family, and I hope to see you again out in the Army, out in the field, as we continue to do that which our country asks us and demands of us. So congratulations and best of luck in your moving forward from this great accomplishment. Thank you.